Governor Greg Abbott issued a new executive order today. It states that only essential businesses can stay open for now, and schools statewide have to stay closed. Carrie Hopperstadt's three sons are home today. The state is trying to keep early child care available, especially for the health care workers. Health care workers in our area, many are having to find a place for their children to go during the day. 2020 roared open unlike any other year in recent memory, with much of the planet brought to a standstill by a virus less than a micron in size. At Chase Oaks Church, after many prayers and much deliberation, we paused in-house services and began to pour energy into our online presence. But that left campus buildings empty, gathering dust and serving no one. A phone call from a Chase Oaker who serves on the Richardson YMCA board was all it took to change that. We started here and there's first responders, people on the front lines that had to go to work, they needed care for their children. And so we quickly shifted to provide childcare for the families that needed it, that were working through this. Chase Oaks offered legacy and Sloan Creek campuses to help out. And many people throughout Chase Oaks did what they always do. They gave generously. The first and foremost need that came, you know, that came up was emergency childcare. And how can we provide that for these essential workers in a safe way? And so Chase Oak stepped up to the plate and not only did they provide an initial gift of $100,000 to cover staffing and costs uh, for those childcare locations, but they also scholarshiped over $62,000 worth of childcare for essential workers. And, you know, so many people were getting furloughed and so many people were getting pay cuts. And that was just a remarkable gift in this difficult time for those families. That meant a world of difference for frontline workers, allowing them to keep their focus on those in medical need throughout North Texas. Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to keep my job if I didn't have the YMCA this whole time, just in the last six months. I feel safe with him being here, with these counselors that care. But the call for assistance went beyond childcare. Online schooling meant kids needed computers to attend classes and not every home had computer access. The YMCA brought on another organization into their partnership with Chase Oaks. As a Houston-based nonprofit, CompuDopt provides technology access to underserved youth through repair, refurbishment, and redistribution of retired computers. Chase Oaks Family Center received and distributed 25 of those refurbished units. The Rodriguez family was chosen by lottery to receive one of those computers. Students, nine-year-old Eduardo and 17-year-old Carlos both did their classwork on a single laptop. The outdated computer struggled to keep up with both of their needs. 100% uh, bless, a bless for us. 100% uh, a really good thing for my older one because uh, he want to be an engineer and mechanic engineer. So he has a lot of classes. The capacity of this new computer is just perfect for him. Laura says her family tries to pay it forward by helping others in need. And with COVID affecting more and more people, there will be plenty of opportunities to help. As for the Chase Oaks YMCA partnership, it's just the beginning. Currently, childcare has been extended through the rest of the summer. For Heather and Mario Marini, even though their son likes to think of himself as young Darth Vader who can take care of himself, the summer camp provides peace of mind. It gives us that relief that we don't have to worry about um, what's happening outside of our home with, you know, a little one. We know that they're safe, that they're taking precautions, that they're taking steps to minimize you know, any issue, so thank you yeah, to the YMCA great, yeah. and thank you to the church yeah. for the partnership, but you know, it helps parents like us, we're, you know, full time, all the time, <laughs> so it helps a lot, thank you. We appreciate the church so much stepping up to say we can partner with the Y to meet these needs in the community, so thank you to the church for that, and that support's been phenomenal with us. Um, and as I said earlier, how do we keep it going? We're, this is not a one and done. You know, when this thing, when things get back to normal, none of us are looking at, and I hope, hope the church isn't to say, you know, look, we did that, time to move on to something else. It's how do we deepen that relationship and whatever that new environment looks like.